um, but we'll jump straight into it. So Jeremy Heritage, do you want to start, mate? Sure. Uh, Lee, thank you for taking the time. How are you? Fantastic. Thanks. Fantastic. Um, you know, you've, you've won titles before, but having this be the, the WBA regular title, um, how is this camp compared to others? And is there that added pressure since this really is, you know, the world stage at this point? Um, all my title fights, uh, no matter what it's for, especially my last fight was a British title. I wanted to win that since I was very, very young. It was the first belt I hold when I was about 10, 11 years old. So there's a lot of pressure on me for that fight. But what I tend to do is I take away the belt. I take away the money. I take away the status of what it's for as well. And I concentrate on my opponent. And I focus on what I need to do to beat them, what I need to do to take away their best attributes and help me get off what I'm good at as well. So it takes away the whole dynamic of something. You get something dead simple and say, right, can you do this? Easy. Okay, if you don't do this or if you can't do this, then this is going to happen. It puts a whole massive twist and pressure on yourself to do something. You don't need to do that. You've always had good knockout power, but since 2018, you've registered five knockouts. Um, do you attribute that to, to growing skills, um, maturation physically, things that you've done differently while training or a little mix of both? To be honest, um, I've always been able to punch since turning pro. Whilst at the Ingle gym, I was told not to knock a few kids out. So my record could have been a lot better than it suggests. Maybe three or def definitely three, maybe more. Uh, I was told to get rounds in, um, you know, things like that. Like if I was knocking everyone out, then it cost more for opponents. Um, so what, as you're learning as well, if you, you're not learning nothing by blowing everyone away, it's getting rounds in the, in the, tank, in the bank. Um, so yeah, it's not just all of a sudden uh, they come out of nowhere, but also I've got more time. I haven't got to come out and rush my work. I can set shots up. I can be patient. I can I can soften people up with shots and then surprise them with my power. And being a pro uh, over the distance, that, that's key as well. Final question for me. Uh, you've got a great team behind you. You have some great boxing minds and voices there, whether it's Ben Davison, Dave Coldwell. What are some of the important things that they've helped you either learn or improve on um, specifically for this fight? Since moving gyms, uh, moving trainers, sorry, to Ben Davison before my last fight, my whole outlook on boxing has changed. How he perceives boxing is totally different to anything I've seen before. The way he coaches is different to anything I've seen before. And I've certainly had about six weeks with him before my last fight. So I kind of had to just, I was getting told what to do and I just had to trust it. So I just went with it and, and pulled my trust into Ben. And obviously it worked. The difference now is I've spent a lot more time with him. Not only is he telling me what to do, but I understand why I'm doing it and how to do it. So it's making a, a lot bit bigger difference now because I don't have to just trust it. I know why I'm doing it. Sounds good. Lee, thank you so much and best of luck. Thank you. Okay, if we go to Ben Davis from the Mirror Fighting next, please. Hi, Lee. I uh, hope you're well. Um, just a quick one from me. Um, do you think on the night, kind of the fight camp occasion and live on DAZN, do you think that's going to have any impact on your performance or are you there just for to get the job done? No, like I said in my in my last interview there, uh, take the pressure off myself. Look, if you're good enough, you'll do it. No excuses, nothing to do with pressure. It's never affected me before. Um, you know, if anything, under the pressure, I've performed better. So, um, you know, no excuses. You can't, you can't look around and say, well, this, this happened, that happened. He's coming to a different country, you know. There's going to be 300 people. They'll probably be getting behind me. Um, it's not boxed in two years. So he's got things he's up against. He's never boxed anyone like me. I've never boxed anyone like him. And um, the best fighter with the guest, best game plan is going to win on the night. Yep. Yeah, and one more from me. Um, would you say, so obviously your opponent hasn't fought for over a year and a half and you've had that great win over Reese Mould since. Would you say that kind of holds you in good stead and gives you an advantage on the night? Um, possibly. Yeah, making the weight as well. Um, I think it will... It may, it may not, but I think it will. Uh, it will show signs of that. I think. So if you look at really good fighters like Mayweather, can have years out of the, out of the ring and then fight again. But um, 
you know, it's all it all depends on how he lives in between. If he's always in the camp, then it might not make much difference. But if he's not training, then jump back in the gym and etc., then it will make a, a big a big impact. Cheers, Lee. All the best for Saturday night. Cheers, mate. Thanks, Ben. If you go to Ron Lewis next, please. Ready when you are, Ron. Oh, sorry. I, I didn't hear my, my name mentioned. Hi, right, Lee. How you doing, mate? Oh, good, mate. Thanks. <laughs> um, with um, 18 months ago when you fought Jazza Dickens, could you imagine that you were getting a world title shot a week before him? Well, everything for a reason. And, uh, you know, I'm sure... Uh, I'm sure I'll be fuming with that. Um, same with Key Galahad, you know. Um, I was at the same gym, and the Ingalls invested a lot of time and effort into to Galahad for a long time, and I could never understand why I was not getting opportunities. I was boxing on his undercard and other kids' undercards and never being pushed for titles. Um, and I, I could never wrap my head around it, because if I didn't make money, they don't make money. But um, obviously, since I left the gym, uh, in, in, in three, less than three years, you know, I've really caught up. And now to fight for a world title, possibly, hopefully, all being well. Win one before him, that would be the icing on the cake. With um, um, your last fight with Mould, I mean, um, you know, you did a proper number on him, let's face it. And um, that must have been an emotionally very important thing for you to become British champion at, uh, you know, after, after a reasonably long career. Because these days people tend to put the British title sort of in the first part of their career where, where you know, I don't, I don't think you'd say you're on the first part of your career anymore, but that, what sort of confidence did that give you when you, when you went back to the gym a couple of weeks after that? Um, to be honest, I've always, I've always knew I was good enough to, to win the British title and outright. Um, obviously if you watch the first attempt at the British title, if you watch the fight and you watch the first five, six rounds skill wise, it was, was miles apart, you know. It was a bit of a breeze. I was at the wrong weight, and a lot of things happened. Um, but you know, so it's all, it was more of a case of when, not if. Um, I was waiting for opportunities. I was supposed to box Ryan Ryan Walsh, um, end of eight, 2018, whilst I was at Ingalls. They promised me that so many times, and it fell through. And that was the last straw why I left. So yeah, it, it, didn't, it wasn't really a confidence thing. I knew I was going to do it. I was confident I was going to do it, and I knew since the first failed attempt at it, I was going to win it one day. It's just a matter of when. And, um, you know, I went out and did what I needed to do and kind of thought, right, that box is ticked now. Let's let's move on. Um, I know you said before that fight that, um, you know, you were talking about Nicky Booth and how that was the first British, the first Lonsdale belt you saw was his. Did you take your belt round to um, your old club or, or the gym or that sort of thing? My belt has been everywhere, literally everywhere. It's been <laughs> schools, clubs. Um, yeah, it's it's been everywhere, and um, no, it's one of them belts that I wanted to win outright and and keep in my family. But you know, opportunities come knocking, and um, you know, hopefully, all being well, I win on Saturday, and uh, I possibly might have to buy a British title to to have. I mean, the prospect of winning Saturday and fighting the winner of Galahad and Dickens must must have entered your head. Absolutely, it's that's a massive fight, but I can't look past Saturday. There's some great fights out there for me. Um, we was actually going to go the WBO route and um, pursue Navarrete for the WBO, which is a, a really good fight in my opinion. You know, he's he's powerful, he's got long arms, but his feet are quite bad, he makes a lot of mistakes. So that would be an exciting fight for us too as well. Um, but yeah, you know, there's some massive fights out here, but they can all dissolve into their bliss if I'm not fully focused on Saturday, which I am. Excellent. Cheers, Lee. Good luck Saturday. Speak Thanks, soon, mate. Thanks, Ron. Uh, if you go to Ames from Boxing News TV, please. Ames here, Boxing News TV. Pleasure to speak to you, uh, Lee. How's life? Well, good, mate. Thank you. Good, good to hear. Uh, first of all, I want to I want to get your perspective on this, uh, Lee. Uh, there are those in the boxing sphere who do and don't recognise the WBA regular as a world title. What's your position on that? I think you know. I'm I'm a boxing purist, and I think that there should be less. There should be one belt. There should be one belt each organisation, and I think, you know, the top four, WBO, WBA, IBF, WBC. Um, I'm getting a shot at a regular title. It's still a world title, in my opinion, um, especially because the super champions moved up and not boxed for hundreds and hundreds of days. So 
And in my opinion, the winner of this may be upgraded anyway. But yeah, I'd like to see less belts and just have one world champion and no super champions, no diamond belts. It just complicates everything for, for the fans. You said uh, earlier uh, in this uh, press conference here, everything for a reason, which is an infamous adage used in the rivalry between George Groves and fellow Knots fighter Carl Froch. Have you had any advice from Carl as you head towards the weekend? Not really spoke to Carl. Uh, not really spoke to Carl yet, but I intend on talking to him before the big night. Best friend, I'm sure he'll uh, throw a pearl of wisdom your way. And let's talk about Ben Davison and Lee Wiley. With Lee Wiley specifically on the video analysis. I'm just wondering how influential that's that kind of link between both of them and then the fighter is in terms of game planning, and especially coming into what is a title fight at the weekend. It's massive. Lee Wiley is kind of our secret little weapon we've got, um, and we're very privileged to have him on the team. Uh, his input and the strategies and the game plans and the things we need to do comes down to minor details, but makes the biggest difference. So that'll be that'll be key having him on the team and working alongside Ben um, and obviously Ben's perception of boxing as well. It's going to be key to his victory on Saturday and a lot of people have been watching it and thinking, I don't want to talk, say too much, but they may think Kenzo has, has had a bad night or he couldn't do what he wanted to do for whatever reason, but it'd be what I'm doing and what I'm making him do and uh, not letting him do, which would be key and a lot of people wouldn't see that. For sure, the best of the weekend. Thank you. Thanks, Ames. And lastly, we go to Jonathan Nagioff, please. Hi, Lee. Um, you know, people have spoke about Kanju's uh, punch output, punch volume. Have you? Do you recall fighting or sparring anyone with that similar kind of style in your career before? Um, I think the closest I box is someone like him, which is, which is sustained pressure. Uh, tucks were quite tight, likes to throw their hands a lot, would have been Josh Whale. And I didn't really box amazing, and I just did what I had to do. I was told not to throw power shots. Uh, this is back in 2015. Not to throw power shots. Uh, touch him up, touch him up, move, touch him up, touch him up, move. It was quite inefficient of me. Uh, obviously, I was at the English gym back then. So probably he would be the closest to this style. Um, but the game plan and way I approach it is going to be totally different. Um, people, I mean, your trainer Ben and I think Dave's meant, Dave Cole has mentioned it as well about, you know, how hard you actually hit, um, especially on the pads. That said, how much of Lee Wood is still for us to see in the coming years, do you think? Plenty to see. Um, a lot of people thought like in my last fight, they, they, a lot of friends said, oh, he was quite competitive, he buzzed during the third. But to be honest, I didn't really get out of second gear until the fourth round. I didn't throw any power shots. Like I say, sometimes I like to tip, tip, tap, soften people up before I let my hands go. I didn't throw really for a power shot. I let my hands go. And it wasn't until I got back after the third and Ben basically said, you get, you're, giving him, you're giving him a bit of momentum now. You're giving him some confidence. Just rein it in a bit, put a few together. Then I put a few together and he went down straight away. Um, you know, I've got a lot more to give. I can, um, I've got a massive heart. I can punch, I'm super fit, and I can stick to a game plan. And I ain't got an ego, so I don't have to come out and let my hands go to please the crowd or to feel like I'm winning the fight. I can stick to a game plan. Um, this, this is a great clash of styles on Saturday. And um, I think you're going to see the best of me that you've seen, uh, even though it's been not as long a camp as others. And I think just the, the style clash itself plays in my favour. That's a lot, Lee. Cheers. Thank you. Thanks for your questions, Jonathan. And um, thanks for your time, Lee. We really appreciate it, mate. And we'll see you down in Essex tomorrow. Brilliant, mate. See you tomorrow. Thank you. Take care, mate. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.